Okay, so the cheapest bike on Amazon. It doesn't look like any bike. And by the way, good luck finding one. <laughs> it's like finding a unicorn now. Um, it's back up and running. It was a $2.15 part. So I went ahead, there are three of these sensors and I'll show you everything. For, so, so watch the full video and you'll see the entire, entire thing, including the install. Uh, and it's actually quite interesting. Again, I keep learning with this bike. So, you know, I'd be careful. You, you definitely want to know someone or know something about electrical engineering. And speaking of that, Juan, my neighbor, amazing at what he knows. And he didn't have a schematic. He just has an amazing amount of knowledge and education that made this happen. So he has saved me tremendously. And Juan, I can't thank you enough. But let's go ahead. We'll get into this and let's show you the details. Okay, where we last left off, we had the E07 error. Nothing I could do, just kept showing me the error, reboot, unplug battery, off, on, same issue. So after tapping out my resources, I then hand it over to Juan. He opens it up and then tests three sensors that are in the rear hub motor, brushless motor, located here, here, and here. Now, what he identified is that one of them was bad. So it wasn't, as the, the wheel rotates, those sensors can determine, the magnetic sensors can determine at how the wheel's turning, I think, or where it's turning, and then somehow creates forward motion. Juan can explain it a lot better than I can, uh, and I'm sure there are videos on this. In any event, the part itself, which I'll show here, is actually not that expensive. And I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, so if you if you do have something like this, um, you could certainly give this a shot. I mean, looking at what he did scared the heck out of me, but actually it's something I feel like I could have done had he just said, hey, or someone showed me on YouTube, said, here's what you do. And I was like, wow, okay. So, but again, it's just having that knowledge. It's incredible. So oh, yeah, um, yeah, a lot of cool, a lot of cool stuff happened. Uh, and let's get into it now. Three sensors and they go embedded in here. Oh, wow. This one, one goes here, one goes here. And Got one it. goes over here. Okay, and they're connected cool. to this PCB board, which. Oh, wow. Um, that's how the controller measures or, or takes the signaling from the sensors and figures out where the motor is with respect to the magnets. Okay. And then it activates certain coils to make it rotate. Wow. Yeah. So, it's, so it, cool. it all happens really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> all right. So now what you're going to see is the installation of the new sensors. One already on his own time went ahead and removed the original ones by soldering the leads and removing them from the, the PCB board that's on there, that U-shaped green motherboard, if you will. And so now he's reapplying, he's putting some glue and putting in the three new Honeywell sensors. Now I'm gonna to continue to roll the video so you can see the process all the way through. And again, if, if somebody has this issue with their motor, uh, it, it's just like anything, just like changing brakes on a car. I use YouTube all the time for stuff like that. Just gives you a much uh, higher level of confidence that something like this is possible. So just, it's really cool what he's doing here. And there's actually a stop at the bottom, so oh, okay. they can yeah. go too far. Got it. And do those leads then solder into the board? Is that right. how it works? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Just want to make sure they're seated, seated properly. Get out, hopefully. Okay. And I hope that um, we don't have any 
have any timing issues because it's a different part. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming it should. I mean, it should work. Yeah. That's my guess. Okay. It's worth a shot. Yeah. Unfortunately, I couldn't. I couldn't read the part numbers from the ones. So remember now, each of those leads on the sensors, there are three of them, have to go into the motherboard. So one of the holes we noticed was still kind of closed up. So what he actually had to do is use a solder sucker and remove the extra solder to make sure that the hole was fully open and ready to, uh, to put the new leads into it. So this part I had to help him with, I wasn't filming. He used needle nose pliers and was holding each lead as he's kind of threading it through the individual holes. Remember there's three per sensor. So that part was a little tricky. He started from the left side and worked his way all the way to the right side of the circuit board. And then they're all through there. So the next item is to solder those onto the board. So he's got him. He's got the motherboard there seated, and now he's applying the solder and carefully making sure that uh, that's all connected up. So this is one of those moments where it's who you know. Uh, and because Juan went to school and studied hard and did great, um, he was able to actually save me hundreds of dollars uh, in, in making this work. Uh, it's, it's just so cool. And, and again, he was like, well, this should work. This should work very calmly. And, and the whole time, again, he, he doesn't have the schematic. So I'm just sitting back in awe, just going, okay. And... After he's done soldering those leads, because obviously they're still poking out quite long, uh, what we end up doing next is clipping them. Okay, and as with any good engineer, after you do your work, you want to test it. So that's exactly what he's going to do next. Uh, we, again, all those leads are clipped off. Everything's nice and clean. Now is the scary part. A lot of wires. There's a pull-up resistor here. It goes to VCC. We have ground here on this side. Positive on the other side. And we're going to start with one of the sensors. Okay. So then those wires are connected to a power supply. Right. Got a multimeter. Under the voltage of the, the output of the, the sensor, basically. Okay. Okay, we plugged it in. So the output is on this side of the resistor. Was that it that just pulsed? See? Yeah. yeah. Goes from zero to 
five. Zero ah. to five. Yeah, and before it wasn't doing that, it wasn't right? Doing that. Right. What was it doing before? Was it like it was so, three. I think something? it was stuck at a high voltage. Mm. Okay, let's try another one. <clears throat> Zero. Nice. One more. Zero. Five. All right. Well, at least they're operational now. Nice. Right? That's great. Good job. That's those sensors there. Okay, now it's time to button this thing up. The one thing we didn't get a chance to film was that he ended up using some RTV sealant silicone uh, to really kind of help make sure that no water gets in there we're going to use uh, thread lock oh okay these guys so we don't want them to come off yeah no definitely yeah they actually they came with thread lock see that blue yes. stuff in there as he just described there he's using a blue thread locker so that to make sure that each of the bolts stays in there nice and tight don't use red yeah, that's too extreme red, Oh, red's like more it's permanent, the, isn't it? Yeah. So this is just a generic motor, right? It's not a name brand per se. Yeah, I think it's just generic. And so here's the wires from the motor. Okay. Well, you can also see a small drop. Okay. Okay, so after putting in the, each bolt, he kind of does a cross pattern so to make sure that it, it seats flat that you don't just kind of you know start on one and then sequentially go in order you want to do kind of a cross pattern so it's closing and sealing flat uh, across the entire section All right, so now it's time to put the wheel back on. And I'll tell you this, when you remove a wheel, use some blue tape with numbers or something like top, under, you know, this part goes where first. It's gonna help you tremendously. Was, it's, oh, I guess it has most, a motion sensor. Yeah, right? it does. <laughs> so I was like, how do I turn this thing off? I was looking for a switch. Yeah, and no. I, I finally realized it all. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> no, it's really nice. I really like that light. I never have to worry about it. And right. It's, uh, the wattage. So does this thing have so to this thread thing through? Has to go like this. This way. This. Was it difficult to take the rear wheel off? Because I'm wondering if I ever get a flat. It was not difficult. Okay. No. Uh, well, it's always more challenging because I know there's more stuff, right? The only yeah, the only thing is is the cable. Right. Yeah, it's not because, like it doesn't have like a like a little connector thing, right? Right. That's that's the only problem. It's a little weird. So and and it had um, zip ties, right? So I have to cut them off. Yeah. So again, there are no quick disconnect cables on this thing. You have to unplug it if you want to fully remove the wheel, which is really strange. Uh, so that's another oddity uh, or exotic, uh, I guess engineering design if you will i'm using air quotes you can't see it um, but uh yeah there's that but he did say and i think it's going to work i'm going to give it a little bit more slack and use some velcro so i think i could still get the wheel off change a tire and then you know put it back together without it being too difficult but i am not going to be able to go far it's not that long of a cable so otherwise i have to unscrew the controller 
unplug all of the individual cables and then I'll have the wheel completely off. And now the moment of truth. Let's light this thing up. All right, with the, yeah, with the wires hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. No more error. Well, let's check this out. Yeah, awesome. It's alive. It's alive again. Thank you. And needless to say, I said thank you like a hundred more times, but uh, it's so cool. Um, well, there you go. I hope this is going to help somebody. If you do have, it doesn't have to be this bike. A lot of these components are very similar on a lot of the bikes. So you don't always have to just throw it away or give up. Uh, if you if you know someone <laughs> or now that you have this video uh, You'll be able to hopefully fix one yourself if you needed to again If I really wanted to I could have just ordered the single sensor at two dollars and fifteen cents But I didn't want to risk it wasn't worth it. Why not just replace all three? So we did since we had it open anyway um, That part was a lot of fun and I'll be getting this thing back on the road it'll be my daily commuter for a while and it's just been a hell of a lot of fun so uh, and I am also curious how the speed will be different you'll notice there when I crank this thing up it went up to 32 now I'm not on the ground obviously there's no resistance so um, it probably will settle back to where it was at about I think uh, 28 miles an hour uh, with full battery so we'll see how it goes anyway hope this helps Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you Juan so much. Um, and uh, for everybody for, for watching and subscribing and, and keep on keeping on. Thank you. We'll see you. Bye.